Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we are back at the Tom Rose School for Professional Dog Trainers. This is part two of the training series that Tom and I put together around seven years ago. So I wanna to thank Tom for giving me the opportunity to share these training videos with you guys on my channel. So let's go ahead and jump right in. This next exercise we like to call the climb command. We have learned here that people that utilize the climb command end up doing better with the training than the ones that don't because they end up being more consistent. Kind of like what we mentioned before, dogs can't multitask. So if we give them a responsibility, they can't do bad behaviors that you don't want them to do. So if I'm utilizing a climb command, my dog can no longer chew on the furniture. They can no longer run it up and down the stairs barking at the neighbor's dog. They can no longer jump on people who are coming over to the house. They can no longer beg at the dinner table. You pretty much get the point. I'm able to put the dog on the climb and they're no longer able to do all those bad behaviors. That once was a problem. Uh, so the way that I teach the climb command is I simply walk the dog over to the climb. Once they jump up willingly, I'm gonna mark and reward. And I'm simply gonna walk the dog over with food, guide him, yes. Once he goes up on the position, I mark and feed. Break. Now some dogs might not do it as willingly or as easy as he's doing it. So what you're gonna end up doing you might have to walk on it with them, yes. But once they make that decision to go up on it, then you're gonna mark and feed. Uh, I've seen some dogs where they'll avoid it, and all I do at that point is I help the dog as much as I can. Dogs end up getting better the more successful they are. So if I have a dog that's really struggling and really worrying about it or they just can't figure it out, I might help push their rear end up, or I might help guide them up by picking them up. I'm gonna show them exactly what it is that I want. I'm gonna paint that clear picture. Once they get in the position, yes, and then feed. Mark and feed. And that's letting the dog know that's what I want. So now that the dog understands by walking over to it, I want him to climb on it, then I put it again on a verbal cue. So break. So I stand next to it and I say climb and then I show the dog, yes, feed. Break. Climb. Yes. So I said climb, then I point, because that's what I did to guide him over to it, then I mark and feed. Break. And what you could do, climb, yes. To make this more fun for the dog is you could set up multiple climbs and you could have them jump around from one climb to the next while pointing to it. And this is part of the reason why we do the send outs. Uh, that you see in some of the other videos is it teaches a dog to follow your hand in which direction you point. So here's an example. I'm going to show you how I utilize that in order to send him to different climbs. Okay, this next exercise is going to speed up my climb commands and it's also going to help with directing. So I'm going to guide him to each different climb. Once he gets to that climb, then I'm going to mark with my release marker, which is free. And then I'm going to send him to another climb by pointing to it. Second he gets on there, release marker, and he's gonna come access the reward. So he's gonna learn the faster he gets to each different obstacle or each different climb command, the faster he gets released and gets to access his reward. Free. Climb. Free. Good boy. Free. Climb. Free. Climb. Fetchy. Climb. Free. Good boy. Climb, free, woohoo, good boy. Climb, and this is a really fun exercise and it gets the dogs to enjoy the climb command and to have fun with it and at the same time teaching them something. Once your dog is starting to understand the heel position a little bit more, uh, you've done the backwards follow exercise, you've done random sits and downs and the dog's really starting to understand that game, uh, what we can do is we can implement our sits and downs while we heal. And this is called a sit in motion or down in motion. The first time I do this exercise, I'm gonna to wanna to lure the dog into the position after I give the command. And then as the dog progresses, I'm gonna give the command and turn into him to make sure that he's doing it and then I can release him. And then as the dog progresses, I'm gonna use a mirror. We got mirrors in this training building. Uh, if you guys don't, you can set up a mirror in the house or whatever. So then that way I can walk towards the mirror, I can give the command. When the dog goes in the position, I can see it in the mirror, then I can release him and give him the reward. So at first I'm gonna demonstrate uh, the emotions with luring the dog into the position. You'll notice once the dog gets into the position, I mark and then I deliver the reward. Patchy. Heel. Sit. Yes. 
hier. Down. Yes. Free. Once a dog is doing that nicely, then you can transition to where you simply give the command and turn and watch them to make sure that they do it. Heel. Sit. Free. Once they get in the position, I release him and I give him his reward. Heel. Down. Free. Fetch you good boy, buddy. And then once again, final step is I utilize a mirror. I walk towards a mirror so I can see it. I give the command. Once he gets in position, I release and reward. Heel. Sit. So right there, you notice he did not do it. At that point, I know he's not ready for that. So I simply go back to luring him into the position or turning into him. Heel. Sit. Yes. Heel. And it's no big deal. If the dog doesn't do something, I'm not going to stress out about it. I want it to be fun, and he just doesn't know it yet. So I go back a step. Heel. Down. Free. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Betsy. Good boy. Sit. Free. Good job, buddy. Yes. Down. Free. Good boy. Good job. Sit. Bad. Sit. Free. All right. Fine. So if you noticed on that last one, I gave one command, he did the opposite. Uh, and I said bad. So bad was my non-reinforcement marker. He was actively trying to do the command. He simply did the wrong one. He made a mistake. So I wasn't going to correct him for that. I recommanded. He did the correct one. I marked and rewarded. So that's just going to boost his confidence. So he's going to be more successful in the next one. Remember, we always want to boost a dog's confidence. These should be fun exercises. And you're going to end up having better performance from your dog. So if you're having trouble with your dog's recall command, it's not as fast as you would like it to be. The dog's moving a little slow. They don't seem as motivated about it. Uh, what I like to do to speed this exercise up is I will give the dog the recall command. Once the dog makes the decision to start coming to me, then I use his release marker so he comes and acts as a reward. And I'll, I'll do this randomly as I'm training. So the dog doesn't have to necessarily come in and finish the... Uh, the, the recall command with the sit front and everything. I'll just release him halfway through or right as he starts to really speed him up because what ends up happening is the dog is anticipating or predicting a reward so they end up going faster. So I just mix this in with my training. Come. Free. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Sit. No, sit. Come. Free. Good boy. This next exercise is called figure eight. This really shows that your dog understands healing more. And those of you that just want a well-trained pet, uh, this isn't going to be something that you're really going to have to worry about. But if you want to take it up to the next level and eventually maybe reach competitive level type obedience, this is in some of your competitive obedience out there. And it's called a figure eight. So I'm going to get my dog next to me in the heel position. And then I'm going to walk around these two cones. Now, at first I start with cones. It's less of a distraction. It's an object. As the dog understands the exercise a little bit more, I'm going to add people. So in the beginning stages, I'm going to use a lot of food to lure the dog and guide the dog where I want. Because when you go left around the cone, the dog has to slow down. When you go around right, the dog has to speed up. And you'll see what I mean by this and how the dog has to change pace and I help him out with food. As he progresses and you do a lot of this, we just take the food away slowly 
and uh, deliver the rewards less frequently, but still when he's doing it properly. Apache, heel. Heel. So right now he's basically just eating and walking the whole time. So you see he speeds up right there and slows down right here. Once he starts to understand it, I can pull the food up. Yes, reward. Petchy. Yes. Good boy. Yes. So I marked that because he sped up. Yes. Down. And this is one of those exercises, break, that you have to just do a lot of them to get the dog comfortable and to get them to understand it. It's a physical challenge for the dogs, so they need practice at it, and they're not gonna get good at it if you don't do it. So this is one of those that you really just have to go through the motions, do it a lot of times, and mark and reward properly. Uh, if my dog is going slow or they're having issues, what I like to do is I speed them up with the food or I'll run away from them. And when I run away from them, I don't even correct them. I just run away and what happens, it kicks in their prey drive. So if I'm going around this way and he starts to lag, I'm just gonna run. And once he catches up, I'll reward him. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll mark and then I'll, yes, and I'll bring the food way over to the side. So you notice he's right next to me, yes, and I bring it over here. So then he speeds up around to get to the reward. Yes, and that's gonna help him understand that he needs to go faster around the turn. And once again with this one, I'm just gonna use the food and really just guide them and help them to understand it. If my dog is struggling on that, what I'm gonna do to make it a little bit easier is I'm just gonna go wider. I'm gonna start really, really wide and as the dog gets better, I'm gonna start tightening it up. So a wider circle is much, much easier for the dog and then once again as they get better, I'm gonna utilize that to just keep getting a, a tighter circle to where the dog can understand it. Okay, so we received a few emails, uh, people requesting on how to get their dog to walk backwards or to understand to walk backwards in heel position. What I first do with this is I'm gonna teach the dog to walk backwards with food. And I'm gonna demonstrate with my dog. And then after the dog understands that they can physically walk backwards to access a reward, then I'm gonna utilize uh, one or two methods to teach him to walk backwards on command. If he's doing really well with the food, I could just use that, or we can utilize the leash pressure, which we learned in one of the other videos, where all I'm gonna do is apply a little bit of back pressure. Once my dog walks back, I'm gonna mark and feed. Uh, so first, I'm gonna show you with just the food. Patsy, so I'm gonna bring the dog, no commands. I'm just getting the dog to do it. I'm gonna push back into him. Yes. Once he walks backward, I'm gonna mark and feed. Yes. So now it looks like he's eating the whole time, but he doesn't actually get the food until I give him the, his marker. Yes. So he's understanding to walk backwards. Yes. And now what I do to teach it after he understands that is I say whatever I want my command to be. So this one I'm gonna call it moonwalk. So I'm gonna say moonwalk. Yes. Moonwalk. Yes. Moonwalk, yes. See, once again, predictive, nope. Sit. Moonwalk, yes. Now if you're having trouble, what you can also do, Petchy, is you can utilize a wall. So bring them over to the wall, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna use the wall to keep them from spinning. Mark and feed. Uh, break. Now the next technique that you can utilize is the leash pressure. So I take the leash, after the dog already understands the concept of going with the leash, I'm just gonna get the dog next to me. Once again, still no commands. He's just having fun right now. Good boy. Yes. And now I pull back. Yes, he walks backwards with it. Pull back on the leash. I'm gonna guide him into the position. Yes, so right there he swung a little bit around on the side, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm not worried about precision at this point. Just doing a little pressure. Yes, 
He walks backwards, I mark and feed. Yes. Yes. Good boy. And this should not be stressful for the dog. He should already understand to go with the leash before you do this exercise, and he should already understand the ability that he has to walk backwards. Uh, now, what happens with some dogs is they'll hunker down or they'll sit when you go to do this. You just all, basically what, what uh, we've seen success with is moving forward and then back again. Moving forward and back again. Once a dog moves back, mark and reward. And this is gonna help get it to where you can have your dog in heel position. You can walk backwards and he'll walk backwards with you. And this is also the step in teaching your left about turns. So walk backwards and he's gonna walk back with me. Once again, he understands the pressure, and that's what I use. I just pull back and walk. Yes. And the dog gets in, he goes with it. I mark and feed. We've had a couple emails with people asking us how to teach a left about turn. And a left about turn is where you're walking forward, you go to turn around, the dog swings back around into position and continues to walk forward. This is called a left about turn. The way that we teach it is uh, just like with anything else, we build the dog up on success. So the more the dog is successful, the better they're going to be. So the first thing that I do after the dog understands heel, they, they should be pretty good at the, the heel position, is I'm going to do a spiral. I'm basically going to walk in a circle and my circle is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And I'm going to be going left in this circle. So my dog's going to be in the heel and I'm going to be walking around like this. It's going to start as a big circle and it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller up until the point where it's almost doing a left about turn. Once a dog is getting pretty fluent at that, then I'm gonna do left turns around a cone. So I'm gonna take a cone, I'm gonna set it up, and I'm gonna heel towards the cone, and I'm gonna walk around it. So that's after the spiral. So first I have the dog, and I'll walk like this. Big spiral, yes. And as the dog understands it, it gets smaller and smaller. Yes, to where they're really starting to understand that comp set. After that, I'm gonna start with the dog. Again, walking around the cone. I'm gonna do a lot of repetitions like this. I wanna be able to do that fluently. Patchy, climb. I want to be able to do that fluently before I actually go into the straight left about turn. And a left about turn is gonna be on the same line. So if I'm walking up and down the line on the floor, I turn around, I'm back on that line. And the way I'm gonna do that, if I utilize leash pressure, this is what I'm gonna utilize for this uh, technique. I'm gonna have the leash behind my back, so it's gonna be hooked to the dog, it's gonna go around, and I'm gonna have it in the back. I'm gonna be walking, marking, and rewarding, and as I come to the position to left about turn, I'm gonna do a little bit of pressure as I turn around. The dog's gonna feel that pressure, and they're simply gonna swing around with me. And I'm gonna demonstrate with Apache. Okay, so I have Apache here and I'm gonna demonstrate that left about turn using the leash. So I have the leash behind my back and I'm gonna start healing with them. Heal. I'm gonna do a right about turn here. Now coming back. Yes, so you saw as I turned right there, he felt the pressure on the leash and he swung around with it. Yes. And I'm doing it really slow and making it easy for the dog so he's successful. This shouldn't be stressful once again for the dog. Yes. So he has to understand that he needs to walk backwards with it. And once again, he feels that tiny bit of pressure because we taught the leash pressure correctly. And I walk around. Yes. And then as that becomes fluent, then we can speed it up. Good boy, buddy. Come on, buddy. Yes. Yes, and this is a young pup, so sit, down. The more you do it, the more fluent they're gonna become and the better and sharper it's gonna be. But I'm gonna make it easy and I'm gonna let the dog be successful with it. This is really gonna help you teach your left about turns. Free. Another common question we have is how to teach a stay. So I'm gonna demonstrate that the first position I like to teach a stay is gonna be your climb command after my dog has a reliable stay on the climb command, then I'm gonna transition that to a sit stay, down stay, stand stay, 
whatever it is that you want. Now, with this being said, I do not use the word stay. So if you think of every single command that we teach our dogs, we uh, require that the dog perform some sort of action. So sit, down, come, heal. All these require that the dog performs an action. When you say stay, stay, uh, it confuses the dog because it's not predicting some sort of action or some sort of requirement. It just, it doesn't make sense in a dog's mind. So what we do is once the dog is in a position, the dog must maintain that position until given up, or I'm um, sorry, the dog must maintain that position until giving a new position or follow command or until released from that position. So if I tell my dog to sit down, climb, whatever, they have to maintain that position until released. So the first one I'm gonna demonstrate is the climb. Now, when I'm doing this, I wanna give my dog feedback. I wanna let the dog know that he's doing the behavior that I want without releasing him from the behavior. So I'm gonna use my continuation marker. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna deliver the reward to him each and every time. So at this point, I'm saying, don't worry about getting up. If you stay there, I'm gonna keep rewarding you. And I build on that with distance. So if I'm walking, I'm far away from my dog and my dog breaks the down stay, sit stay, climb stay, whatever, I simply say no. I casually walk back to the dog, I give the dog a correction, and then I put him back on the climb command or put him back in the sit position, whatever, and then I mark and reward. I don't run at the dog, I don't do all that crazy stuff because what happens when we run at our dog really quick, uh, it, it creates a stressful situation in the dog's mind and they're no longer learning at that point. So if my condition punisher is no, I'm gonna say just like that. So he jumps, no, I walk to him, I give him a correction, put him back on the climb, yes, reward. If I'm using a remote training collar, when my dog jumps off, I say no. I do the correction on the remote training collar. I guide the dog back along the climb. I mark and reward. So I'm going to demonstrate with Apache. Free. Climb. So and I'm not, I don't correct something like that if they jump on it and accidentally fall off. So he's on the position. I'm watching him. If he breaks it, I'll use my condition punisher and I'll give him a correction. I'll put him back on. If not, I'm going to build his confidence by mark and rewarding. Yes. So as I walk away, yes. Then I come back and feed. So I say the yes before I turn back to give the reward to the dog. So it's not this. Yes. Because if I do that, then this becomes a cue and no longer my marker sound. So my marker sound must come before any new direction in movement. So I'm walking this way, yes. I go back, give a reward. And of course, in the early stages, we wanna watch the dog. So I'm walking away, I'm watching them, yes. Come back, give a reward, yes. And I always see what the dogs will do by uh, proofing them. So I'm gonna make sure there's no pressure on the leash when I do this because I taught him leash pressure. So by pulling, he should come with me. But I'm gonna hold the leash, I'm gonna walk to the end of it, and I'm gonna drop it. And then I'm gonna mark and reward him if he stays on. Yes. Yes. So it's showing them just because I have the leash and it looks like we're going for a walk. Yes. If I didn't give you that command, you should stay there and I'm going to come back and I'm going to deliver a reward. If they start getting good at it, I'll run. Yes. And I'll keep doing different exercises like that in order to teach to stay. If he were to break the position, once again, no. Correction, guide him back up, yes, reward. And this is gonna be the same with your down and your sit and your stand, whatever it is. So if I pull him off there free, and I bring him over here and I put him fetchy, and I'm not giving him any commands, just getting him in the position. Now once he's in position, yes, feed. Now again, he has to stay there until I release him. Yes. If you go to give him the reward and the butt comes up, I withhold the reward, butt goes back down, then I give him his reward. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. And as they get better, I'm gonna take a little bit longer before I mark and reward. Down. Yes. Same thing with the down at first. I build the distance. Yes, go back and feed. And uh, with this as well, I can grab the leash, act like I'm going for a walk, drop it, yes, reward. Down, 
climb. And this is really gonna help make it clear in the dog's mind what it is that you want with them without any sort of conflict, without having to go, stay, because that really just confuses dogs. So we make a really clear picture for the dog to understand it. And by doing this, you're gonna get a really solid stay. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And as always, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you guys in next week's video. All right, thanks again. Yes. Free.